What is up everybody, Michael Gardner here, founder of dfymeetings.com, where we book you consistent sales calls so you don't have to. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about five lessons that I learned from growing my agency to $70,000 a month. And that was actually our biggest revenue milestone that we hit in December. And it made me do a lot of reflection to think about what are some of those lessons I learned that were different hitting this level um, compared to, let's say, when I first hit 10, 20, or 30K. And I wanted to point out some less obvious ones that you haven't probably seen in a blog post or an Instagram post or YouTube video. So I thought I'd just make this video and just walk through them. Maybe if you're growing, let's say, 30K and up or 20K and up, these could be really relevant to you because I certainly have learned some things that, you know, I, I thought you think you know everything and you certainly don't. And um, I, I've definitely had some lessons handed down to me and I wanna go ahead and make this video to go through them. So let's get into it. Drop it. Drop it. The first one is that bigger companies are easy to get results for. So no matter what you're selling, in, in my case, I sell cold email services. So I'm helping companies book sales calls but almost no matter what you sell, bigger companies are going to be easier to get results for. They're going to have more resources, whether that's, you know, if you're doing ads, maybe that's creatives. They're going to have more videos, more testimonials, more influencers, better optimized websites. Or in my case, if you're selling cold email, they have a higher customer value. They have a better sales process, more case studies, better branding. Maybe they have awards. You can look them up on Google. Maybe their founder has a lot of social followings. But bigger companies are almost always going to be easier to get results for. We found that the larger the company, the easier the results. And at some point, a company is so large that you're almost just guaranteed results because their brand name has so much goodwill. So I would say that it's worth having less clients. And even if they are a bit more difficult to get, going after those big companies that have the resources that you really need to be successful. Number two is that hiring becomes a massive bottleneck at some point. When you're first starting out, you can get by by yourself, maybe one kind of entrepreneurial teammate and a few virtual assistants. But when you need to hire real employees, not entrepreneurs who are gonna work for you for six months and start their own thing, um, that's a whole nother discussion. It can be really hard to find good ones who can work at rates and you can afford for the role. So hiring becomes really painful. And also when it's not you training the new hires, hiring is really expensive because you're taking your team's time and you're paying a salary to someone who might get fired 90 days later. So hiring becomes really difficult to find candidates, to qualify them, and also to make sure the right fit. So what we've done is we have constant hiring on. We're constantly interviewing people, constantly hiring, even when we don't have a dedicated role open, because we know that roles open all the time, and we wanna have a backlog of people who are interested that we could pull from. We're also much more thorough with our interview process, and we're very slow to hire, very fast to fire. And that has certainly been a learning curve for me. And tying into that, number three is that company culture becomes very important as you grow. You know, a lot of times when you're first starting an agency, you have a few contractors and virtual assistants and they work for four or five people, but they don't maybe talk in internally. They don't consider you to be their employer. As you grow larger and your team starts to collaborate and you really build a real company, that culture is really important. If you, let's say, talk bad about clients or cursor or you're crude or whatever it might be, that's going to be reflected onto your team because you're seen as a leader and also your leadership roles. So establishing your company culture, acting the way you want your team to act, and also having your high level team members act the way you want your team to act is going to be critical for establishing a culture that people want to work for and thus attracts top talent in retaining team members and also getting your team members to actually try their best to help you grow your business. Number four is that you're going to be punished for your bad decisions 30 to 90 days for making them. I find that in a smaller business, if you make a bad decision or a bad call, or maybe you're lazy about something, you normally feel that result pretty immediately. But on a bigger company where it seems to be more lag time, generally those bad mistakes, for example, you turn off prospecting for a little bit, or you stop your hiring funnel, or you're sloppy on onboarding employee, you're not gonna feel it right away, but you're gonna feel it 30 to 90 days from now. And that's a tricky because Sometimes you make a mistake, you forget about it, and you're 90 days later, like, what, what's wrong here? And then you look back and realize, oh, I did that. So you need to be much more intentional with the decisions you're making because the lag time to feel the consequences from those bad choices 
is going to be more delayed. And lastly, service standardization is very good and I would even say necessary for preserving great margins and also keeping sane. So when I say service standardization, I'm talking about offering one, maybe two things to one company type and potentially depending on your business model, maybe even one niche of that company type. This way you can get really good and translate those results across all of your clients rather than having to be the expert of 10 different services across 10 different industries. This also helps you train better team members, have better trainings for them, uh, better convey your expertise to prospects, and just overall, it's a great idea to grow your business. Maybe at some point when you're doing millions, you get out of departments, but I believe at least up into a million dollars, having one core service is a very good idea. And there you have it, five lessons I learned from growing my agency to 70,000 per month. If you want help growing your own agency, make sure to check out b2boutbound.io where myself and my team can help you do the same. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one and I hope to talk to you soon at B2B Outbound.